So today I want to go over one of the most important endgame systems of Diablo 4 called World Tiers. Now World Tiers are going to be the main difficulty system of Diablo 4, but they're also going to be much more complex than that once you get into the endgame, because they're not only just going to increase the difficulty, increase the loot and experience you get, but it's also going to start unlocking endgame systems and content, and even give you the ability to unlock new higher rarity gear pieces. So once you start Diablo 4 on your character creation, you're actually going to be able to choose between World Tier 1 and World Tier 2. World Tier 1 being Adventurer, World Tier 2 being Veteran. And World Tier 1 is going to be for players who are new to the Diablo franchise or are new to ARPGs and want the game to be a bit easier or for someone who wants to focus more on the story and less on challenging gameplay. And World Tier 2, which is Veteran, are for people who want a bigger challenge. And Veteran is also going to be giving you a 20% increase to experience gained from monsters and monsters drop 15% more gold but everything in the world all the monsters are going to be quite a bit more difficult now these are both the starting difficulties so neither of them are going to be super difficult but these are going to be the difficulties you have access to from levels 1 to 50 and once you get to level 50 you're going to have the ability to unlock the next world tiers this is also where the end game of Diablo 4 is going to start so once you get to level 50 you have the ability to unlock world tier 3 which is nightmare difficulty but this also adds in one of the new content systems which are called capstone dungeons so once you get into the end game world tiers which on launch is going to be 3 and 4 you have to complete a much more difficult and longer dungeon which is the capstone dungeon to unlock that world tier so to get into world tier 3 you have to complete the entirety of the campaign which is going to bring you to right around level 50 and then you have to complete the capstone dungeon called the cathedral of light and once you've completed that dungeon you unlock world tier 3 which is going to essentially be your entrance into the end game and world tier 3 is, is going to last from levels 50 to 70 and you unlock a ton of additional new content with this world tier so first off you're now able to loot sacred and unique items now unique items are a whole new item rarity and are going to be some of the rarest and strongest items in the game these things are going to be ridiculously rare the developers even said you should only expect to get a hand handful of these in an entire season of the game which is a three month period so they're very rare and ridiculously strong and some of these unique are even going to be build defining and are going to allow certain builds to even exist but then you're also able to start getting sacred items which are essentially a modification of already existing gear so you could get sacred rare items or sacred legendary items and these are going to be basically the same as normal rare or legendary items but when they're sacred they can roll higher stats than the base versions of those items can. So they're not necessarily going to be better, but they can be better. And also with sacred items, you can't put a normal legendary aspect on a sacred item. So if you say had a legendary item from level 20 that you were keeping because you had a good roll on its aspect, you wouldn't be able to go take that legendary aspect and put it on, say, a sacred rare item. You would need a sacred aspect to put on other sacred pieces of gear. So these are essentially a higher tier of item, but with the same rarity of earlier items. Then you're also going to be unlocking some additional endgame content. First off being Nightmare Sigils, which I've gone over the system before, but these are what allow you to turn dungeons into Nightmare Dungeons. These are essentially dungeon keys to turn dungeons into the endgame versions, which are going to have different affixes applied to them, making them harder, but giving you more loot. And then you also unlock the Helltide system. I've gone over Helltides before, but essentially these take over an entire region of the game, changes how that whole region looks, spawns in the armies of Lilith, tons of big bosses walking around, makes it much more difficult, but when you defeat enemies in a Helltide, you get a new currency that you can use on Helltide specific caches. And then also, champions can start spawning in World Tier 3, which if you played any other game in the Diablo franchise, you know what champions are. And the specific details of this are enemies are more formidable, so all enemies are just going to be much stronger. Monsters give 100% increased experience, monsters drop 15% more gold, and monsters overcome 
of your resistances. Now, this last part is actually very important because as you go up in world tiers, the resistances you need goes up. So once you get into higher world tiers, the same amount of resistances you had before is going to be worth less. Now, this is going to be a big way of how the game is actually scaled. So you're really going to have to focus on your builds once you get into world tier three, because you're overall going to be much weaker. Enemies are going to be stronger in general, so deal more damage, have more health, but then your resistances are going to be worth less. And there does seem to be some amount of damage reduction specifically for enemies. So they're going to be taking less damage in general as well, which is also going to be a way that they balance the game in the background. And also keep in mind that getting to level 100 in Diablo 4 is going to take quite a lot of time. Developers have said it's going to take average players around 150 hours to get from level 1 to 100. And World Tier 3 goes from level 50 to 70. So even more experienced players are going to be spending a lot of time in World Tier 3. So after you've been playing in World Tier 3 for a while and you feel like your build is strong enough, you can go and try to complete the Capstone Dungeon that unlocks World Tier 4. Now, even though these World Tiers have specific level brackets, I don't think you actually need to get to that max level to be able to unlock the next World Tier. And that's specifically for World Tier 3 and 4. You do need to complete the campaign for World Tier 3, which will probably take you to level 50, but you shouldn't need to be level 70 to do the Capstone Dungeon to get into World Tier 4 if you're build strong enough. But once you've gotten to that point, you need to complete the Fallen Templed Capstone Dungeon. Once you complete it, you now have World Tier 4 unlocked which is going to be the highest world tier on launch of Diablo 4. And this world tier is going to take you from level 70 to 100 or from whatever level you're strong enough to start it in. Now, the biggest change for world tier 4 is going to be the ability to get ancestral items and new unique items. So world tier 3 allowed you to start getting uniques, but some uniques are only going to be obtainable in world tier 4, meaning there's even going to be rarer chase items in some of these world tier 4 specific uniques and most likely some of them are going to be much stronger but these are going to be very very end game chase items but then you also have ancestral items and just like sacred items these are essentially a higher tier of base items and just like sacred items you can't take a normal legendary aspect and apply it to an ancestral item you need an ancestral legendary to take that aspect and put it on say an ancestral rare item and just like sacred items ancestral aren't going to necessarily be stronger, but they can roll higher stats. So they can be stronger, but they won't always be. But since I can roll higher, once you've played quite a lot of time in World Tier 4, you're going to start to fill out the entirety of your character with ancestral items. So at some point, if you're like best in slot at the end game, pretty much everything you're wearing is going to be ancestral. Now for the enemy specifics, enemies are now more fearsome. Monsters give 200% increased experience. Monsters drop 15% more gold. And now monsters overcome 40% of your resistances. So again, you need to be very wary of your resistances and defenses when going up to a next world tier because instantly your resistances are going to be worth a lot less so you're going to be a lot squishier now something else to note with world tier 3 and 4 is that it seems that the developers are also making these enemies more aggressive because with the most recent developer live stream they went through this where Riker's experience was that everything felt a bit more aggressive and dangerous and I think this is what they're talking about when enemies are more formidable in world tier 3 and more fearsome in world tier 4 where they're just making enemies more aggressive Enemies are going to attack you from longer ranges. They're going to be much more aggressive on how quickly they're trying to get to you to be able to deal damage to you. And in general, everything is just going to feel much more dangerous. Even looking past just their increased health and increased damage and new affixes, they're just going to be much more dangerous in how they're actually acting. And the developers did mention that even in the higher world tiers, these different monster families are actually going to interact with each other in different ways as you go up in the higher world world tiers so maybe their synergies are going to be much better with each other and they're going to be able to maybe surround you much more easily or keep each other alive in better ways maybe apply more cc to you all of which ties into enemies just being much more dangerous and also keep in mind that there will most likely be additional world tiers added in either future seasons or future expansions there was talk in the past of there actually being five world tiers on launch of the game we know now that there is only currently going to be four but i would not be surprised if there's a world tier five within the first year of diablo 4 being launched with new gear and probably even new unique items 
And like I mentioned, this is going to be one of the most important systems to understand in Diablo 4 once you get into the end game, because unlike a lot of other ARPGs, the World Tier system is not just a difficulty increaser. This is actually going to be unlocking you new gear and new pieces of content. Like for, say, Helltide, which is a big piece of the end game, you actually can't even see Helltides as a system without being in World Tier 3. That's a massive piece of content in the end game that literally doesn't exist before world tier three so understanding how world tiers work understanding what you're getting out of them and understanding how to unlock them with these capstone dungeons is going to be very very important once you want to get into the end game start those end game systems and start creating your end game build but that's pretty much all i want to go over so thanks for watching